Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be trying out the new Shader 3 Plus brushes from Waffle Flower Crafts. I hope you'll stick around to find out if these are a must have in your craft room. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you've been around my channel long, you know that my first blending brushes that were not the cheap ones from the Dollar Tree were from Waffle Flower Crafts. And as soon as I got these, I knew why you might want to pay a little bit more to get quality. I love these brushes and I use them a lot. Now, I haven't been using them lately because I'm on a different design team now where I have to use their brushes a lot. But this is still a set of tools I will not let go because I honestly do love these. So a couple weeks ago, Waffle Flower reached out to me to find out if I would like to try out their new Shader 3 Plus brushes. And I had just saw the release of their And I do have some in this little bag here. I got a sampler pack. And I liked how they not only added color, pretty dark color right away because of the smaller brush, but you could also do detailed areas. So I said I would love to try them out. So today, that's what we're going to do. If you would like to find out more about their new brushes and their other products, I will have these products listed in that description box below, along with a few others that you'll see me use in today's video. And I will also list their online store and their YouTube channel so you can go get more detailed videos to find out more about their products. Now, as I get into the process and trying these out, I will tell you about those other products and tools I'm using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For today's cards, I will be using Waffle Flower Crafts Fall Leaves Background Stencil and I'll be making two cards. One will use the traditional blending brushes and the other one will use the new Shader 3 Plus blending brushes. I chose four ink colors that I thought would make a nice fall leaf card and for the first one I will be using the traditional blending brushes. Now a neat thing on this stencil is there is a kind of scored or etched line where your four and a quarter by five and a half inch card front will go. So I put that in place with some blue painters tape and now I'm going to start with the yellow blending brush and honey ink. Now for this one, I just ink blended the leaf in the upper left hand corner, but when you do something like this with these big brushes, you probably need to mask off what you don't want blended. So for me, I just tore up some pieces of sticky note and placed it around the area that I wanted to ink blend. Now once I'm done with one leaf, I have to then move all of those for the next one. So while this works perfectly and I've done it many times, it is a little tedious. Once I finished all of the yellow leaves, I wanted to pull back my stencil and see what it looks like. And even though I had the post-it notes on there, I did over blend in some areas you'll see here. It's not as noticeable on this craft cardstock, but it did happen. Now before I move on to the next color, I do need to clean the stencil off. I just don't want to pull that ink into the other areas or get it on other brushes. Once the stencil was cleaned off, I moved on to the next leaf shape and I'll be using blue corn ink for these. So I use that same process of masking off the leaf I did not want to blend and I just kept going with the blue corn, then with the pumpkin ink which is an orange, and then finally the mold wine which is kind of a maroonish color.
Once I had blended all four colors, I was going to do the reveal, but I realized in time that I forgot one of the leaves. I missed one of the blue corn. So I brought back in all the little post-it pieces, masked off the other leaves, and got that finished. And now I can do the big reveal. I do like this background stencil, I like the colors I chose, and I think it's going to make a pretty card. Before we can get to the comparison with the Shader 3 Plus brushes, I do want to clean my stencil off so it looks nice and new. And to do this, I like to use Dawn Power Wash. I usually just spray the stencil and let it sit in my sink for maybe 3-5 to five minutes, and then it usually rinses off and looks like new. For the second card front, I'll be using those same four inks, but this time I'll be using those Shader 3 Plus brushes for the blending. I got my piece of cardstock set up once again on the back of the stencil, and now when I go to shade these, which you see I tested it here on that background piece of grid paper, and look how saturated that comes off at first. How cool. Now I did make sure when I picked up the ink to actually stencil my brush, I tapped a little bit off on the grid paper, and then using kind of flicking motions, I came into that first leaf with the honey ink and just kind of brushed from the outside into the middle. When I thought I had a good coverage, I wanted to lift it up and look at it. And look at the depth you get on that. If you see it here compared to the first one, which I thought looked great, I really like how on this one the edges are just a little bit darker. And this would be probably almost impossible with a regular blending brush to get on an area this small. I got my stencil put back in place and I continued on with all of the honey leaves. Now you'll see here this time I am not fussing with the post-it notes and that makes it much quicker in my opinion. I did still have to clean off my stencil in between colors but this was definitely much faster and I think less inky on my fingers than using all of the post-it notes and moving them. Now there was a little bit of over blending which you might see later when I do the reveal but but it was definitely less than with the bigger brush even when I used the post-it notes and I just liked the quickness of this and again just the texture and the added dimension of just swiping in from the sides or being able to with those smaller brushes. So I finished off all four colors and here is the reveal of card front number two. Let me know in that comment section below if you prefer the original or the shader brush background. Waffle Flower was kind enough to send me some die cut sentiments in the package as well. Now I'm going to try foiling these black label ones, but I did see in one of their videos that they used one of the shader brushes to color in the white part to make it match their card. So that's a great idea as well. I thought these would make good thank you cards, so I chose two sentiments from their sub sentiments thanks die cut package. And I'm going to put these in my mink carrier and place the foil pretty side up on top of this. Now I wasn't sure if this foil would stick to the back of the carrier, so I did bring in a scrap of paper here to place below that before running it through. And I took it over my mink and you know what it looks like it might have worked because I can see where the little pieces are but we're going to let this cool off and cross our fingers before we do the reveal. Now while I was waiting for that to cool off I did go ahead and die cut my stenciled pieces with the stitch rectangle die and now let's peel that back. And you know what? It looks pretty great. There is some area right at the bottom of it that didn't get foiled. So I took it back over to my mink and ran it through again and it fixed it just a little bit. But you know what? It's fall, it's leaves, it's grungy. I don't think the sentiments have to be perfect. So we're going to go ahead and use it. All of the pieces of the cards are ready so it's time to start assembly. Off camera, I made some top fold craft card bases and I placed each of the stenciled pieces flat onto the center of those. I like how you have that craft border which is the same as the stenciled piece, but then you have the leaves blending off the edges with that stitch detail. For some extra decoration and texture, I brought in some twine I had and I thought this burgundy color went well with the mold wine ink. 
I cut off two pieces that were probably about 8 inches long and I placed some twine nests on the back of each sediment. To adhere them in place I just added the ATG on the back. For the first one I wrapped the twine around my fingers first before putting it on there and for the second one I just kind of manually rolled it around on the back. Both of those had to be adjusted a little bit until I got the look I wanted. And now to get these placed onto the card fronts and to help hold the twine in place a little better, I brought in my quarter inch foam tape roll and placed two pieces on the back. Then these go onto the front and I kind of put them in the upper left hand corner. I did this because on the first one I had a couple spots I wanted to cover up. To finish the cards off, I brought in some gold pearls. I thought this would help pull out the gold foiling from the sentiment piece. And I placed five on each card front, kind of floating from the upper left down to the bottom right. Now because sometimes it's hard to see a personal message on a dark card base, I did cut two pieces of white cardstock to go in there. And I thought, you know what, let's decorate these a little bit. So I brought back in the stencil and both types of blending brushes, and I used the ink that was left on the brush just to add a little decoration to the bottom of each. This is a simple way to add some more color to the inside, and it helps you clean off those blending brushes. Once both of those were done, I added them to the inside of the cards, and here are some close-up looks at the finished pieces. Well, I don't know what you think of the final cards. While I do like them both because I love leaves and I love fall, I do have to say that the different depth that using this skinnier brush gave to the card on the right, I definitely preferred this one. And I will be ordering some more of these so I can have a brush for each of my color families. Let me know what you think in that comment section below. And again, if you want to check out any of the products I use today, I do have some links in my description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.